Okay. I made you a gochujang chicken, but also before we dig into this, I just want to say that I saved you the best part. My favorite part. Um, this is the tail. Is that what it is? I call it the butt. The butt. It's really the chicken's <laughs> butt. What isn't there a nice name for it? Like Pope's nose? The Pope's nose. Pope's nose. But it's a butt. Everybody always talks about the oyster on the chicken and that the oyster is old news, so yeah. Earth to World. It's the all about butt. the chicken butt. The butt. We are folks in Bon Appetit Test Kitchen. Um, today we are making slow roasted gochujang chicken, which is a recipe that I developed for eatbasically.com. And it's one of those extremely low effort, high reward recipes. The other thing that's gonna happen while this chicken slow roasts at 300 degrees is there's gonna be a bunch of little baby potatoes that are nestled in the skillet with it and they are going to cook in all of the schmaltzy gochujang drippings that come off the chicken, and that might be the best part. The setup of this goes a little bit like this. One three and a half to four pound chicken. You always wanna pat your chicken dry so that when it hits the oven, the skin can immediately start getting crispy. If there's a lot of water still all over the chicken, it will impede browning, and we're looking for a nice caramelized brown skin. So I'm going to generously season this chicken, all sides, with salt and pep. Look, his little wings are already tucked in. And then it's also great practice to season the inside of the cavity, because um, that way you're seasoning it from the inside out and not just on the skin. Um, if you have the time to do this in advance, season this the night before and leave it uncovered in your fridge. Um, it will make a huge difference in terms of both the texture of the flesh, but also just like how juicy and seasoned it is. Let's put some garlic right inside the cavity. This will just sort of perfume it. I'm cutting two whole heads of garlic in half. Half of it is going to be in the skillet with the potatoes and the other half is just getting tucked. Here, let me spin this around. Right in the cavity. And then I have a little bit of kitchen twine. Actually, a lot. And this is my preferred method of um, trussing is just take the two legs, cross them, and then tie them up just in a, with a single knot. Now for the gochujang rub. So I'm gonna take five tablespoons of gochujang, which I'm going to approximate. Okay, so my very precise measurement of five tablespoons right here. And then as you can see, it's very thick. So we're going to add some oil to that and that's gonna help kind of um, thin it out to make it a little bit more slatherable. So I'm gonna stream in approximately one quarter cup of olive oil. So this is thinning it out a bit. And the oil is also going to help conduct some heat and create that really nice golden brown chicken skin. That feels about right. So now, three cloves of grated garlic on a microplane. I'm adding about one and a half inches of fresh ginger, so I'm just going to break this down into what I think is about one and a half inches. Okay. Okay, so whisking that all in. And now this is like a nice bright red paste that we can brush all over the chicken. Pastry brush, very crucial tool here. Um, and I'm coating every nook and cranny with some of this marinade. One thing about gochujang is that there's quite a bit of sugar in it. That's what makes it very delicious. Um, and that also 
helps in the browning process because since we're cooking this chicken at such a low temperature, it actually doesn't really have the tendency to get super golden brown the way a chicken might if you roasted it at like 450. So the added sugar in the chili paste is really gonna aid in that process. Um, so you don't miss out on any of that. Okay, one and a half pounds of baby creamer potatoes. Um, if you can't find potatoes that are this small, you need to cut your potatoes down to approximately this size um, because that way they'll cook at the same rate that the chicken does. And when the chicken's done, the potatoes will be done. They are going into this bowl with the rest of the marinade. And they're just gonna get all coated because we don't wanna leave any of that behind. And I'm going to add a little bit more oil to that just to help them kind of get started in the oven. And then once the chicken starts cooking and all the schmaltz starts dripping down, the magic will start happening. And then they're gonna go straight into a 12 inch cast iron skillet. It's pretty important that you use a 12 inch skillet because what we're going to do next is place the chicken in the middle of the skillet, making sure that none of the potatoes are actually under the chicken because any potatoes left under the chicken, and I know this because I tested it out several times, will be so insulated by the chicken that they will take much, much longer to cook than any of the potatoes around the outside and everything will cook unevenly. Basically just scoot these little guys out and make space for your chick so that everything is finished at the same time. Okay, sorry for the messy. There we go. It truly, it really truly is the same color or like a more intense version of it. We're gonna put the sunset bird in the oven at 300 degrees for anywhere between two and three hours, depending on how big and how hot your oven is and what else is in there. Um, my oven at home takes three full hours to cook a chicken this way. These ovens in the test kitchen are huge and very powerful and although it's set to the same temperature, the birds finish sooner in these large industrial ovens. So you'll start checking around two hours. Okay, it has been five minutes because there's another chicken that's been in the oven the whole time. I don't wanna to lie to you guys anymore, it doesn't feel right. So let's go check on the chicken that's been in the oven this entire time. Cause it has been in there for two and a half hours um, and she's looking real nice. Um, okay, there's a lot of really delicious schmaltzy gochujang drippings down here. Wow, I mean, wow, pretty stunning, okay. Let's just do a quick potato doneness test. And I just wanna make sure that when I put a little bit of pressure on it, the potato gives and smushes, which it has done. Like I could even break into it as I just did with just a spoon. So it is tender. Okay, let's bring this over. And as with all roast proteins, let it rest for about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, We'll slice up some scallions. I'm gonna cut them on a very extreme bias so that they're nice and sort of like angular and geometric. Okay, I'm gonna cut both of these limes in half and actually one of them I'm gonna cut into wedges for serving um, so that people can squeeze to their liking. But I will say that the potatoes are going to need a little bit of lift and a little brightness and acidity, and that's going to come in the form of scallions and lime juice. We'll transfer this to the cutting board. What we're going to do now is smash all of the potatoes, just enough to kind of split them open so that the insides are exposed and give them a chance to soak up all of the juice that's at the bottom because we wouldn't want to waste any of that. And they're basically like little potato sponges now. Don't those look nice and fun? Oh my God, look at that friggin' garlic. Would you look at it? We're going to add about two teaspoons. I'm not gonna measure it, it just seems silly. I'm gonna do a drizzle of about two teaspoons of honey. The juice of two limes, oh, such a juicy lime. What a pleasure. And then 
some of these here scallion just kind of get tossed in and then finally we're going to carve this chicken okay so there's all of our parts and then the way that I like to serve this is just straight out of the skillet because the presentation of it is really pretty that way um, and the skillet has now cooled down a bit so just nestling all the pieces right back in there and you just throw it on the table and that's your centerpiece what can I what can I offer you like in terms of dark I light a thigh. a thigh a thigh yeah a thigh no problem mm -hmm. coming right up well thank you mm, and then nice. can I give you some schmaltzy peas yes please because those are maybe the best part second only to wait for it please Thanks. check this out that came out very that, that the, that's pretty excellent it's excellent yeah. looking yeah. garlic right yeah. Mm. Delicious. It's very like barbecue -y. Like Korean barbecue -y? I was thinking more Casey Masterpiece. What is that? Casey Masterpiece, is that like the name of the... Um... The really bad barbecue sauce that you buy? But this is like that oh. all grown up. Okay, c'est right. fini. Great work. Thank you. I'm gonna depart. Namaste. Well, I guess what? <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, I just came up with that. <laughs>